If ever you've used custom properties, I'm sure you've run into some frustration with them with the problem I'm gonna show you right now. So uh, this is where things work, is here I have my content and I've set things up where I have a background and a color, and so I'm using some custom properties to declare those. And then I want an inverse class, and instead of changing the background and the color, I just redefine those custom properties and it actually works, and that's really cool. But if that's working, how come down here, I've set up some box shadow small, medium, and large, and I've set those up here, box shadow small, medium, and the third one there has a large on it. And on those ones, I have this var box shadow, and if I come and look all the way up here, I have a var box shadow that's set up to all of these custom properties here, but my they're not changing. And even like this last one, like, you know, just to really make it stand out, I want the opacity to be one, and it, it's definitely hasn't changed. And, why not? If, it, if it's working over here where I can redefine my custom properties, why is it not working over here? Well, that's what we're going to explore in this video. Hello, my friend and friends. Thank you so much for coming to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin. And here at my channel, I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS. And one way we can do that is by understanding this stupid problem with custom properties. And so uh, let's take a look at what's happening. And for now, I'm actually going to disable this inverse class just because uh, it's going to so let us see the shadows a little bit better that we're putting on here. And so what's happening in this situation where these are not working is my box shadow is, this declaration is saying my box shadow class should be going and finding this var box shadow. So the browser goes and it looks through the CSS and it finds it and it goes, it finally reaches the root and it goes, oh, here's this box shadow declaration right here. This box shadow declaration is saying we have all of these other things that it's getting applied to. And it's not going from here and then going back up to this other selector to find the blur and opacity. It's got to the root, it's found all of this, and at this point, it, it can't escape, it's stuck in the root here now. So now, it's going from here and it's going, well, my VO, vertical offset, is zero, zero, one. And, you know, it's, it's all of these are being applied at this level, rather than being applied all the way down here on these ones. And these are actually going completely ignored. That wasn't the case with these declarations over here. And the reason that wasn't here is because of how this is being set up and how it's working, where the browser's going, okay, this should be my var bg light. It doesn't need to look anywhere else for it because that var bg light is being declared right here. Same thing with my color body. These are both being declared right here. So, and again, that's within here. Let's just go take a look. We have my content and my inverse. So it's on the same div. So within this div, these two custom properties are being declared here and they're being used here. So it works. Whereas, let's go back to this one one more time. This, it's getting the box shadow. The box shadow isn't being declared here anywhere. It's having to go all the way up to the root and find it on that root declaration. And once it gets into the root, it's not going to escape out of it to find these properties uh, over here. So that's the big difference with this, is where is this custom property being declared? And that includes being overwritten, because here we are overwriting ones that do exist in the root. So yes, these are declared in the root, but they're also being declared here. It doesn't have to go back into the root to find the original one. It can find these declarations on that div itself. Whereas this, there is no box shadow anywhere that exists here, it has to go to the root to find it. So how do we overcome things like this and how do we do it? Well, there's one thing you do not want to do that would actually work. And let, let's just fix everything right now. We're gonna do this instead. Now that clearly worked because that shadow on the bottom is clearly very different from that shadow that's on the top now. Now to understand why this is working, it's just because by putting the star selector here, we're actually applying all of these rather than the root, which so we have to go up through, it's applying it to every single selector on your entire site. So it's not relying on inheritance, it's not relying on anything else, the cascade, it's just saying this box shadow is now declared on every single element on your page. And so if I want to overwrite things, like these all exist on that, you know, where this box shadow is being declared, it exists there because it exists on every single element independent of every other element but that causes performance issues. So do not apply your custom properties to your star selector, even though it does solve uh, that problem that we were just looking at. Uh, so you're going, Kevin, how do I solve this problem? Well, I'm gonna leave all of these here, even though we could take them out from here if you wanted to, or even, you know, we will look at a way that we can take those out from there. 
but what we'll start with is by taking the box shadow off of here and there's two options. One of them would be to have a box shadow class that's going to just set up to declare this. And then what we could do is we could come here and say we have a box shadow, box shadow medium. And so we have to have both declarations in order for that to work. And it's working on that one. Let's do it on this one too. Just put a box shadow, box shadow at large, and we will see that will update. And then we get the bigger shadow that's on that one. That's a little bit annoying though, to have to have this double declaration just so we have this available to us. So I'm actually gonna remove that from here and remove that from here, uh, this one here. And instead of doing this, I'm gonna do a uh, square brackets. We're gonna do class is star equal to box shadow. And this is a little bit different and the selector, but you can see that it's actually worked, <laughs> right? We can see everything being applied to those three. And this is saying that we wanna select any class that has box shadow in it, basically. And we could even do that, just to make sure it's box hyphen shadow hyphen. And as long as all of that is available and it is a class that is being applied uh, to a div, it's going to set this on that. So then we can just use our, back shadow, our box shadow small, medium, and large. And as we can see, they're coming through. And just for fun, let's even do uh, color is and we'll do a 255.00 there to give us a red shadow. Uh, of course, you need a semicolon at the end of it. And there we go. And of course, this is one of the nice things with custom properties is we can take something like box shadow that doesn't have longhand, right? We can't do all the different things. And we can create our, long, our own longhand based on sort of the shorthand that is box shadow by creating a different variable for each one of them. And I think to in improve this a little bit, I probably wouldn't include all of that here, especially this color one, you know, that this, I guess, could be like box, box shadow color. And then, you know, you could even put box shadow in front of all of these to make them a little bit um, more, you know, if they're in your route, you want to make sure it's very clear what they're doing. But I could actually delete them all from here. And we could come here and just put in default. So now we don't actually have any shadows coming in uh, because we don't have enough properties being applied here because we have VO, doesn't have a VO, so it ignores it. So what we could do to fix this is come in with defaults, zero, zero. My default blur could be a one rem my, or maybe 0.5. My default spread would be a zero. And then my default color would be a zero, zero, zero for black. And my default opacity becomes a 0.15. And by setting all of that there, you can see everything has come back and is working. And then I can overwrite any of those defaults wherever I want if I need to make a change to it. So if I want the blur to be bigger, I can make a one blur. I could do a spread of 10 rem for some strange reason. Uh, whatever you need and it should work. And if you enjoyed this video and dive into custom properties, I've also looked at other reasons that I really love custom properties and some of the cool things you can do with them. So you can check that video out right here. And with that, I wanna say a very big thank you to Jan, Johnny, Stuart, Tim, and Doug for being my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.